We did it. That guy's long. Yeah, they're long. Yesterday we went and got our beams here. Check them out, beautifully wrapped. Oh yeah. So this is a glue lamb beam engineered for what we want to do with it on the porch. These are basically, this is a four by nine nominal dimension. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, two by fours squished and glued together. And where any seams are, you can see here how they hook those seams together on the two by fours where they're gonna connect together. The cool little glue thing there. I met you in the sun, saw my plans come undone. Cause I knew you were the one So we from Paris on one knee Wow, these guys are huge. One size fits all. Super thick. Because I am a super messy painter. This is what we're using right here. The stain. We use this on the deck. It's mahogany. So we're going to go ahead and stain all of this. That's my job. We think it's easier to stain it before you actually put it up. Because then... You don't have to be on ladders and you can get all of the spots that, you know, where water might get in between, like say your beam that's sitting on top of your post, we can get the top of the post. Yeah, you can get all those spots when you stain it first. So that's what we're gonna do. No, that's what Jules is gonna do. Hopefully it comes out really nice. I also learned that I really prefer to use like sponges when staining over paintbrushes. This is like a cloth sponge, but it seems to be working really well. Yeah, it's coming out good. Look at that. It's, it's beautiful. Soaking. It's soaking in a lot. I bet. In the day I met you, I think I met myself. I don't ever want to be with anyone else. We got the kind of story that the stories would tell. Different than I've ever felt. And I know we When they're laid down like this, I can make sure to get oh, inside yeah. mm -hmm. all these little holes. Whereas if they were up already, I probably would miss it. Yep. I probably would miss that. This is also a sealant, which is important. Right, not a all. stain. This isn't just a stain. Yeah, it's a stain and a sealant. So that's why it's important to get inside all these little crevices. I, like, I think this way works better. Yeah. That's my professional opinion. Good morning, guys, and welcome back to our off-grid homestead that we are building from scratch here in North Idaho. We started off living in tents right over here. Then we started clearing the land and building our home here. We're making good progress. And I'm glad you guys are here today because we've got some fun stuff going on. Check this out. Look at this right here. How did that get there? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's how it got there. Oh, that was a lot of work this morning, getting all of this down on here, but check it out. Why, why are we doing this here? Why did we put down this gravel there? Well, I'm glad you asked. There's plastic underneath it. And that's to help keep moisture from coming up out of the soil to the bottom side of the deck. This is gonna be an eight by 57 covered front porch and uh we want to try to keep the spring mosquitoes down hey buddy what's going on there watcher this is watts he's one of our mousing kitties here we call him our solar kitties him and his sister ray yeah so we want to try to keep those mosquitoes down and not give them a moist cool dark place to hide out in the spring and early summer so we put the plastic down we put the gravel down and hopefully hopefully they won't love living down there and then come up through those holes in the deck, you know, the little slots between the boards and nibble on us while we're sitting out here enjoying the front porch. This is going to be a front porch sitting house. You know, a lot of houses, you know, the front porch is just, it's like just decoration where you come up to drop packages off if you're an Amazon driver. But we want to put some benches out here, some nice chairs and be able to actually sit on the front porch watch the world go by check it out here we've got our brackets that are going to go on here we've chalk lined out right where it needs to be all the way down and uh that one's pretty close to the edge this one unfortunately 
Uh, it's super close to the edge. The rest of them are pretty good. All right, that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. And that one's good. But that one, I mean, you're not really ever gonna see it anyway, but I just wanted it to be like perfect. Huh, Jules? Yeah, but that's all right. It's Near okay. perfection. Near perfection's okay, huh? At least most of it's gonna be on top of it. Yeah. And so um, we're gonna go ahead and set our brackets on here, drill the holes for them. Then we can put our beams up there. We're gonna, I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Hold on, hold on, I'll show you. All right, we got our bracket right where it wants to be. Go ahead and draw a circle. Drill a hole right there. We're gonna blow this thing out. I can't find my little my little blower, so we're just taking a fitting, put it on here, blow it out. <laughs> That's a lot of wind. All right, so these are called redheads. That's just the brand name. This is not a redhead. This is some generic type. But uh, anyway, you take this, pound it down in the hole. This thing expands down there, and then when you tighten it down, it like really uh, cramps clamps it down in there, makes it super solid. First, you gotta tap it in. Normally, if you're gonna pound on the end of a bolt, you wanna put the nut on and do it because you're gonna mess up the threads on the end, but these are tapered at the end, special, so you can tap them in there, or you can put the nut on if you're, if you're worried about it. I'm not worried about it. We'll find out if I'm wrong. You can hear when it's done and it hits the bottom, it's totally solid. Changes tone. The hammer bounces right off of it. You see there, the threads, they're not even messed up. We are gonna have to cut these off though. Our bracket goes on here, just like that. And then we got a washer and a nut to hold it on there. So if you're going to have to cut a bolt off like this, then it's best to put the nut on first, cut it off, and then when you take the nut off, it'll fix the threads Otherwise, it's gonna be a pain to get that nut back on there. So we're gonna go ahead and put our safety glasses on, and then cut this bolt off. Gonna put a new a new blade on because new blades are nice nice and sharp and cut nice and fast and clean I gotta cut these beams surprisingly i don't know if it's surprising it's surprising to me but maybe not to you but they don't come square from the factory it's like way off a square so we're going to square up this end we'll take it over there put it on the brackets and then mark it where it needs to be cut for the length and that way it'll be directly above the post when we put the post on there. So I was watching, uh, it's like, I think it's called the Farm Project, the guy over there who tests all the tools and stuff. Anyway, he did a really cool test on uh, skill saw blades, and he found actually that the Makita skill saw blade is the fastest and the sharpest blade out there against all of them. The Diablo is kind of in the middle, but if you're gonna be cutting through nails, the Makita really suffers if you end up cutting through a nail. The Diablo did pretty good cutting through nails. So I don't know. I'd like to try that Makita and see if it really is that much faster than the Diablo or the DeWalt blade. Yeah, take a look at this end on this, on this beam, you guys. It is super ugly. <laughs> Glue, totally uneven, plastic. Yuck, we'll be cutting that off. Yeah, these beams do not go here, but the post is gonna go right here. And so we're setting our beam centered on the one down there. And then we're coming here and we're taking our square and we're putting it up and we're finding the center of this, marking it right here. And then we can cut it right there. And then when we set it up on top of the posts, if the posts are plumb, it'll fit right in the center of the post. Should work in it theory, work. huh? Yeah. yeah, it should work. I think it. <laughs> Seems like an easy way to figure it out. Plus, we want to cut off this end anyway. Look at this thing, man. It's all like glued, blurbed out on it or something. Blurbed out? Blubbed? Blubbed out? <laughs> spewed. Something. Spewed out. The glue spewed out right there. <laughs> oh, man. 
What do you think? Oh, it's so close to per I mean, look at that. So close to perfect. That looks good. We just need to stain it. Yep. Stain it. Well, we won't stain it now. We'll stain it. We're going to put these on here and take them back off so we can put the posts on. So we can stain it after we do that. Perfect. But, um, and this stuff is so light. It's like crazy light. It must have really dried it a lot. Like super dried it. But it's cool. Number next. Number next. All right. We got them all laid up here. Jules has got the level. Let's put her on there, man. Right there. Right here? Just, yeah, just plop her down there and see what she looks like. Plop down. Ooh. Oh, man. Look that at that. That's really good. Oh, that's so beautiful. Let's check it, like, towards okay, the middle. Spot. Yeah. How about... How about across the seam? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. Look at that. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Let's, um, let's go across the next seam. <laughs> and then we'll try the other end here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Dude, that's awesome, man. Check. One more check. Oh, this one's off just a hair. Just a hair. It could be the staples too. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of staples in it. But it's still pretty good. It's still within the lines. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Within the lines, that's good. It's awesome, man. So we can cut all of our posts the same length then. Yep. Thanks for making it level. Oh yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> Here's your safety glasses. Oh, thank you. I just came up with a, with a really smart idea. At least I think it's smart. I've been kind of like mulling over ever since ever since we were going to build this. It's always been in the back of my mind how to figure out exactly how long to make each post. Well, we found out now that, that all of the posts, right, they can all be the same length because this thing's level laying on here. But we're going to put a, we're going to put one truss up here and support it with a two by four up. And then, guys, this is what we're going to do. We get that up there and we get it set where we need it so that we have enough room underneath the fascia right so that we can put the roofing and slide the roofing up under there then what we do is we measure from that truss down to the beam and that's how long the post needs to be i'm just laughing because you're like so excited right now <laughs> i am because i finally like it finally clicks i know how to do it now i'm serious dude it's been in the back of my mind the whole time now you got a plan now we got a plan all right so we got to get these bands off of here Maybe we could just pull them like the plastic ones, Jules. Because they're like... Are they metal? They're metal, but they have a different kind of crimp. It's not like one of those old style, like aluminum kind of band crimps. Let's try it anyway. Okay. Ready? Yep. Close my eyes. <laughs> oh, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Ready? Yeah. Hey, it worked. It worked. Nice. All right. And they didn't just like explode. Not yet, huh? <laughs> Maybe I should have put my safety glasses on. <laughs> I think the end ones fell off. How many right. do we have here? Three bands. No, I mean, oh, how many one, two, three, four, five, two, one, two, two, three, two, four, two, five, 26, 27, 28, 29. 29. 29 trusses. Hopefully they're... They're just little guys. Yeah, they're not very heavy. Ready? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we did it. What do you think? Heavy or light? I think they're probably Hopefully, really light. They're one person carry. Oh yeah, dude. They're way light, Super man. Super light. I think a guitar is heavier than this. Two, two by fours and little, whatever those are called. Yeah. <laughs> little pressy things. Cool. Yeah, we'll be able to put that up there easy and check. Sweet. Let's do it now. All right, so that's the look that we're going for right there. The problem is, there's not enough space up here. See right here? There's not enough space for the sheathing and then the, uh, what's that other stuff? Roofing. Roofing, right, to fit up underneath there. So we're gonna have to lower it down. I wanted it, cause that ceiling is gonna be, at, I wanted it right at eight feet, but it's not gonna be at eight feet. It's gonna be at like 810. 710. Or 710, yeah, 79, somewhere around there. So we're gonna do a little fine tuning on that. And then, man, check it out. So it's the plan, Jules. Yeah. We got our support right here holding it up. We measure from here whoosh, straight down to there. And that's how tall our post has to be. Be perfect, man. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's awesome. Well, how about I hold it and you walk out there and see what it looks like? Okay. Just for the first the first look from far away. First impression. Don't turn around yet. Go out there, Willways. Oh, yeah. That's going to be so cool. It's going to be cool, huh? Yeah. There's going to be a pile of snow out here, hopefully.
All right, you can see we've got a chalk line going all the way down. We got our two by four, I guess it's like a ledger board, ledge thing for the trusses to sit on. So we, we figured out exactly what height we want that. It's gonna leave us a two inch gap between the top of the truss and the bottom of the roof fascia, which is gonna be plenty of space to fit the, the sheathing up there and then to slide the roofing up on top of that. Leave us, leave us a little bit of a gap there for for play and variance in the in the fascia, hopefully. Hopefully everything's gonna slide right up there the way it's supposed to. And uh, then we gotta put up that two by four. On that chalk line all the way down, <sighs> down to there. Who you got there? You got your new baby? My little baby. Your little baby's getting fat, man. It's funny that he likes to be on his back. Yeah. Yeah, but they caught another mouse. They did. Found another mouse today, so go kitties. Go kitties. I don't mind feeding them if they keep keep getting the mice. Yeah. So proud of you. <laughs> what are you it's doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's a chilly morning today, guys, on the homestead. We saw some frost. We went to town early. We got some siding. Actually, this is the first piece of real siding that we're gonna be putting up there. It's gonna go above the trusses on the porch and then up to the trusses on the house. That way they'll be siding up there before we put the trusses on. So we got these guys right here. Nothing special. It's not even gonna be seen. It's just for protection and to kind of make it official. But uh, get these guys cut to the proper size, 14 and a quarter inches. Jules is gonna paint them up. And then hopefully we'll get those trusses up there today. Always looking for that light in the shadow. Always been wandering through darkness. Check out this cool thing. First time I saw these before, but I didn't know they had this cool funnel thing. So watch this, man. The guy showed us how to use it at the store. Open it up and this guy goes on here. Apparently like that somehow. It also says it on the top of the can. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that ain't that fancy. There we go. Like that, man. We'll give it a try. So it's supposed to be a spout. Yeah. What does it say on here? Connect, spout, and pour. Huh. That's pretty cool. It's way fancy. Maybe it'll be less messy. Yeah. Look at you, good kitty. Good job, Ray. Good job. Yeah, you're a good kitty. Look at you got that thing. You got that little mouse. Good job. Yeah. Right there, guys. Burr, 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 Marty. It's cold oh. out here. Post time. These aren't square either, huh? Um, well, I checked the tops. Of Two of them are square on the top, but one is not. So we're going to have to cut the top off of one. And I say the top, but not like it really matters, but there's a stamp on them. So we want the stamp at the bottom facing towards the house so you'll never see it. Yeah. So we'll have to cut the top off of that one, but still the stamp will be on the bottom and you won't see it. It is nice that they're not over stamped. There's only one stamp on yeah. each one. No doubt. Because <laughs> the stain, it looks really good, but it definitely wouldn't cover the stamp mark. Yeah, there it is right there. Right there. It's def definitely visible. Yep. And there's a crayon mark right here. Oh yeah, tell them what that meant. The crayon mark cool. on it means that it was graded by a human. Yeah. And so if it only has a stamp on it, at least at Home Depot, only has a stamp, that means it's graded by the computer. And, uh, but if it has a crayon, it's graded by a human. I think you need your bigger jacket. No, it's cold, man. <laughs> we had a little bit of a scare, you guys. Check this out. I looked down at these that we just cut and they are drastically different in size drastically different in size. They should be the same because we cut them to the same 
length. We thought we did. We thought we did. But we did go over and we checked and they are both 106 inches. So that means they came from the factory that yeah, way. Big difference in length there. This so, is supposed to be 10 footers. Yeah. And that's like 10 foot two. <laughs> so we're going to double, triple check ourselves so that we don't mess up because we have no room for error. No room for error. We don't have any extras of these. No. We don't want to go back to town again. So we double, triple check this one. We're ready to cut it. <sighs> All right. We're just tacking in the tacking in the bases just in case for some reason we've got to take the post back out we're just gonna we're just gonna tack them in there but you never know if uh if we messed up somewhere and we gotta take it out or something for some reason got all six posts put up. We're using these braces right now on all of them. Those will come down, but they're holding it up plumb for us. Next step, babe. Yeah, I think we set this first, the, the center beam on. That's what I mean. You can just do by ourselves pretty easy. And then we'll have to get Seth to help put the 22 footers on there. Yeah, this one is pretty easy. This one's heavy, but that one is so heavy. We definitely need help on that one. Yeah. Little Asher just hanging out. Soon he'll get to go on the porch. Wow, Marty, that is gonna look so awesome. Yeah, that's gonna look cool, huh? Oh, wow, so cool. Why don't you show him the brackets that we chose? These are the brackets right here. <laughs> Big, fat, black ones. Yeah, pretty, like they're not like a fancy. We went with more of a classic square look. Yep. Before we put the other two beams up, we're just going to brace the middle on the outside just to, just to give it a little bit of support so that we don't accidentally bump it, knock it down, hurt somebody. Yeah, those are beautiful. Yeah, I think they look really cool. Good little expensive accent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it wasn't um, overly inexpensive, was it? No. <laughs> so but, these are Simpsons Strong Ties. And that bit came with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be sweet, man. Now we can put that other one up there when we set it up, it can't like fall off. Cause we'll put it up from that side. Yeah. We'll go down and do that one. Yep. Yeah, we'll go do this one. And then we need to get our muscles to come help us put up the other two. That's Seth. Thanks so much for coming out. Yeah. Um, all right, so what we're gonna do is pick it up. We're gonna set it on top of the ladder. Okay, and then we're gonna go up the ladder. We're gonna carry it up and set it on top of the post. This okay. one gets set on top of that post. And this thing gets set on top of that. Maybe this is gonna be one. this is gonna be over. This one needs to fit right on there. You should have that one probably. This one? Okay. All right. Let's see if we can do it. Ready? Yep. <laughs> Was today arm day? No, leg day. <laughs> oh, that's good. Almost there. <laughs> oh, nice. Got it. They're heavy, man. This is the heaviest one. Go ahead and set it on there, Seth. Marty, hold on. It's almost got it. Whoa, nice. Okay. Wow. You guys are amazing. Yeah. Thanks, muscles. <laughs> we got it up there. Put the brackets on. Make sure they stay where they're supposed to be. Yep. And then uh, we should probably put some trusses up there just to make sure that they fit. Yeah, good idea. We're going to go ahead and chalk line the top plates. That way we know we've got a nice solid line where we can attach the trusses to. We're using these screws right here for mounting the ledger board up here all the way down. Just making sure that it is tied into the framing of the house super secure because the force on this is, is downward some, but it's also this way, right? 
Let me, let me let me explain. As the snow comes off of the roof here and lands on the porch roof, some of the force is downward. And the trusses are built for holding that weight. But there's also another force at work here, and that is pushing it this way. Right as the snow comes down, it wants to go this way off of the roof, which means it wants to pull the porch off of the house. So we got to make sure that we secure the trusses to the house really well to hold it in so that the snow can't like want to pull it off. So we've marked where our top plates are here. We're going to be attaching the trusses to this board here. This one's just set up here as an example. And then we're going to block in between each truss right here so that we can attach it to that top plate all the way down and then attach it into the trusses. We'll also attach it up at the top as well, but the main support here is going to be this guy and that and that midpoint right there to keep it from pulling out this way. So while I'm doing that, Jules is over here. What I you doing? A fun paint job. Yeah. <laughs> Jules is our expert resident painter. I don't think expert. I definitely don't qualify as expert. Good. You turn them white. <laughs> I turn them white. Just don't pay me to be clean. <laughs> so she's painting up all the fascia, the front and the side fascia for this guy here so that we can get it up there. As soon as we get all those trusses up, let's see, we've got blocking to cut and then we've got to fix a major mistake which is gonna take quite a bit of work. I'll show you the major mistake when we get there. One more thing you probably didn't see go up yesterday. I got our siding up here. That's gonna be above the roof. So there's gonna be about that much space right there in between the top of the porch roof and the bird blocking for the house right there. Oh, look at that. All of our blocking cut the first one and then all the rest. So I told you I'd tell you about our major mistake. We are right in the middle of fixing it right now. These guys right here, they were an inch too tall. So when we put the trusses up there, the trusses were not level, like as in the ceiling for the porch would not be level. So we cut these ones off an inch. We're gonna cut these ones off an inch now as well. Seth's not here to help us take it down and put it back up there. So we're kind of, we got a trick that we're doing. I'll show you how we're doing it. All right, so we first we gotta take off these brackets here so i'm gonna try to lift this jules is gonna slip this two by six under here might have to move my ladder though we'll see ready <laughs> i gotta move my ladder ready here we go all right so we got that lifted up an inch and a half which means it's not sitting on the center one so we can cut that center one all right so now that we've got this side raised up an inch and a half right here we're not touching so we can go ahead and cut this post off an inch shorter all right so we measure down an inch all right now we try to cut it off nice and beautiful like All right, let's go around the other side. Pretty good. Yeah. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Good job. Thank you. Now we stain it. Yep, stain that and then we will uh, raise it up a little bit more. I'll put some blocks in here so we can cut the two ends. I'm gonna try to raise this guy up again. And then uh, Jules is gonna put two blocks over there, which should get us high enough. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. Got it. All right. You cut this one now. All right. So we got this one up in the air pretty good. It's holding up there and it's touching down there. All right. We got the last one here cut off and stained. I'm going to lift it up. Jules is going to take out those blocks and then I'm going to lower it back down onto the post. Hopefully. Stay out. Ah. All right. We're touching here. Are we touching in the middle? Yeah. All right. So it should have turned out good. We checked it already with one truss, and now the the ceiling is level. Put the center part back in. Yep. Put the brackets back on. And the trusses. And we can set the trusses. Marty just got finished putting up the part that actually makes it look super cool. Check that out. All the brackets are on. So we've got these L-shaped ones here and that. And then on the middle, there are T's. I think it looks so cool. 
Good job, babe. That was tedious, huh? Yeah, but we're ready for trusses now. Woohoo! It's a chilly one this morning. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Dad, have you seen the weather report? No. Uh, let me show you. Okay. Yeah, check out the weather there. It's like rain. If we look at the, the daily forecast, it's rain, 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 all rain for like the whole rest of the month. With snow too, like there's snow on a couple of the days there. Wow, go back to Sunday. Look at Sunday's low. Yikes. Oh, 27 degrees. Cold. So yes, guys, it is another day here on the homestead. And uh, we're going to be getting up all of these trusses here before it starts raining. The weather says we've got just a few hours before it starts. Hopefully, we can get that done. And then for this time when it is raining heavy, if we can't finish the roof because there's too much rain and or snow, we do have another really cool project that we're going to be working on that's going to be indoors under the house. So, a little teaser for that there. Yeah. Jules has got her nail gun. excited about it. No, this is for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using this, this is yours. So we're gonna go ahead and get started putting up the rest of these trusses yeah. and get it done before it starts raining. Let's do it. I have a little surprise for you. What's that? You ready to see? Okay. This is the weatherman. The weatherman. Ready? Yep. Ooh. Huh, black and orange. So this is a um, some kind of moth, I think. Caterpillar. Yeah, this is a caterpillar. <laughs> and um, supposedly the old kind of wives tale thing is if it's more black than it is orange that means a harder winter, harder winter yeah. and i'd say he's more black than orange yeah uh-huh mm -hmm. yeah he has more black on him yeah he's all curled up and cold though yeah i was hoping he'd straighten out but he's not going to <laughs> yeah and like crawl away or something yeah it's cool so we want it man more winter let me show you guys the progress we're making here so far and uh explain to you for those of you that are new the goal for this winter okay all right so we've got our new roof system up here coming down the snow will pile up here pile up here slide down slide down fall off i want snow from this piece of grass here all the way up to the roof right there that would be a big pile of snow i want to come out of the front door right here and look this way and see nothing but snow that's the goal. That's a lot of snow though, man. That's uh, that's probably 10 feet of snow. That's eight feet, yeah, about 10 feet piled up, right? So if we got six feet on the ground out here in the field, I bet we could have 10 feet stacked up right there. I bet. And it's not gonna come off as fast now because of the, the, the pitch on the porch. So it's gonna drop straight down rather than like spreading itself all out. It's gonna be a big pile of snow there, hopefully. So we wanna show you guys how we're nailing these off and attaching them to the house. First off, we have this ledger board right here, and we've got these big screws that go into the studs. Every 16 inches, this guy is screwed in, and uh, yeah, so it's attached to the house firmly. Then we come up and we put our truss on here. We've got a block on this side. I'll show you how we're attaching the block. This line right here is the center of the top plate. So there's a two by six here and a two by six here inside here for the top plate. So first off, we get this guy up here and make sure it's plumb. Then we nail it into, into that block over there. Then we grab another block. Jules is the official block getter. Yep, that's my new title. Block getter, block picker upper. Thank you. Yeah. Then we take our block and we put it up here. And we get it centered on that line like that. Put the level up here, make sure it's level. That way, when we put the next truss up, this edge right here is plumb when we nail the truss up there. That, that Usually happens we sometimes. Pick that up. <laughs> now then we nail from this side into this block. All right, then we continue that process going down. But I know you're thinking, I don't know if that's enough to secure those trusses really good. So we're coming back with uh, these same type of screws right here. We'll come back and we'll put screws in here, locking this into those top plates. And then we're coming in with a long six inch timber lock and we're coming down right through here into this board to lock it in even tighter 
than it is. But for right now, we're just nailing them all up there, getting them up there. We'll come back later and put all those screws in because we can go faster this way right now. Trying to beat the rain. Trying to beat the rain, yeah. I'm just a speck sitting up on the grass, looking out at the world, wondering if it can last. I keep a hope, hope, hoping. I keep a hope, hope, hoping. I'm just a speck sitting up on the hillside, listening to wind chimes, wondering if I can I forgot to show you this part. We're just roughing in the square on it with the speed square right here. Julie adjusts that end until we got it square. And so we're doing this side first, then we'll come out to the outside and we'll do the outside and get them all set. So right now the outside is actually loose, but we're using big timber locks and blocking to run this, this truss down into the uh, beam. I'll show you that once we get out to the outside. The inside, the side against the house is all done. Check this out. I was kind of wondering like, you know, these are just two by fours up here. Is it really strong enough to hold all that snow? Well, check this out. This is 220 pounds on just on one truss. I think it's strong enough. It didn't even like, it didn't even budge. Oh, trusses are pretty amazing. Well, it started raining about mm, half hour to an hour ago, and uh, we've gotten a lot done. So we put two by six blocking flat right there, and then the soffit material, right? The soffit material will go up along there, and it will seal all that off. So not like regular bird blocking, but we put two by six material so that it hangs down on this side so that we have something to attach the ceiling to up here. Um, and they did it kind of weird, like the way that the trusses are built, there's an inch and a half heel right there and then a two by four. So we could put two by four bird blocking in between each one of these. We may still do that now that we have that two by six down. You can't put a two by six just in there like regular bird blocking, it's too tall. Two by four is too short. So we went with this route and we may put the other blocking in there later. Let me know down in the comments below because it's not gonna happen in this video. So let me know what you think put the additional bird blocking in there, but the soffit material, remember, the soffit material is gonna close all that up so there's not gonna be any access for anything to get in there. Oh, you saw on that weather, man, 27 degrees. 27 degrees, you guys have been asking about this. That doesn't look like it's ready for 27 degrees. So, like I said, we've got a, a cool project coming up here that's probably gonna happen probably in the next video, I would bet. But check this out. So this is a cool root cellar. And if you look right up there, you can see that framed in area. You can see the light coming through right there. That is gonna be an opening for stairs. Stairs are gonna come from right here, right down like that, which is gonna leave a, an, a spot right here underneath the stairs. I want you to guess what's going in that spot. It's something that's gonna hopefully be in the next video if we can get all the supplies that we need. But for right now, we've gotta temporarily take care of this situation so it doesn't freeze. All right, here's the temporary fix. We got dirt piled up all around that valve and the water line goes underground, comes under, goes down into the house. Finished backfilling some of this a little bit. We got it backfilled over here because the foundation right there, right at that line is only two feet deep. So we're, uh, anyway, saving it from the frost. And then it goes down way deep, like seven or eight feet down this we're gonna build 
a little opening here so that we can backfill up against it and then put gravel in the bottom just so that any water that happens to get in there will will float down put a little roof on it ah <sighs> so that's temporary it ain't that's not gonna last all winter for sure that tank's gonna get way frozen but It'll do for about a week or so, because we're getting short on time, man. That is gonna do it for today. We did pick out this video right here for you to go ahead and watch next. But in the meantime, we hope you guys have a really great day and keep smiling. Oh, sorry, what? <laughs>